and welcome to Kafero.tv. My name is Angela Marembe, your host, and today on Unpacked, we have an exceptional guest by the name of Dr. Tony Devine, who is the Vice President of the Global Peace Foundation, and he's in charge of the Education Division. Basically, what he does is to oversee the development of character, creativity, leadership, and entrepreneurship. Uh, that is not only in Africa, but South America, Asia, USA, and we're so pleased to have you here, Dr. Tony. Great to be here. Yeah. I'm very impressed with, with the Innovation Center here. <coughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. So uh, the term Global Peace Foundation, it sounds extremely huge. Anything where you have the words global and peace, <laughs> it's, um, it, it, it's huge. Yes. So would you mind telling us a bit more about what the Global Peace Peace Foundation is all about? Yes, of course. So at Global Peace Foundation, we're uh, essentially a peace building okay. um, NGO. Um, as you said, we're international. Um, and we take a, a, a universal principles and mm -hmm. shared values approach okay. to bring like innovative solutions <coughs> to uh, some of the most pressing problems um, that are affecting our world today, right? Yep. Um, so for example, <coughs> in Korea, um, you may issue Yes, right. I did. We're doing a huge project called Action for Korea United that's bringing together 900 NGOs, oh, wow. representatives from both political parties, interfaith leaders, okay. to sensitize South Koreans on the benefits of unification and taking the unification issue beyond the Cold War framework right. and rooting it in a 5,000 year history um, uh, in Korea that emanates, it's an emanating philosophy. Mm. Uh, that focuses on living for all mankind. So that's one example, right? right? We're doing uh, a lot of work on countering violent extremism. Yes. So uh, we're working with Homeland Security in the United States, in the state of New Jersey, bringing uh, police departments and community leaders together mm. to um, you know, identify nefarious characters in the community okay. and uh, you know, doing that collaboration. So that's a, a two-year grant we, we're working on right now with Homeland Security. And then here, here in um, here in Africa, we're working in four countries. Mm -hmm. So here in Uganda, of yes. course, uh, we're also in Kenya, Tanzania, and in uh, Nigeria, right? Mm -hmm. So um, what's relevant here is that one of our biggest projects in Uganda and also in Tanzania is transforming education. Yes. And we can talk more about yes, that. Yes, I wanted to touch. <laughs> I wanted to touch on education because uh, it, we do have you as uh, in in charge of the education Correct. division. Um, Let's start with demystifying something for me. Sure. Um, the education system, every now and again we hear people saying the education system was built for a time that is not relevant today. Yes. Would you be able to shed some light? What is the history of how the curriculum was created? Yes. Because from my take, is it comes about like the education system was built maybe around the industrial revolution time to prepare people to go and work in factories especially after the wars yes is that really the history of education and how the syllabus came into be yes so the it, that's essentially correct uh, the current education system mm. globally was designed in the industrial age yes. right <clears throat> you know where workers stayed in the same jobs their mm. entire life yes. right uh, you know you're talking about the production line mm. essentially um, and uh, you know we often say you know, that the system of education is, is stuck in the 19th century. Exactly. The educators are stuck in the 20th century, yes. but the students are living in the 21st, 21st century. century. So, there's, you know, you have this, like, huge disconnect yes. from the actual real world out here today that's moving at lightning fast yes. pace, right? Absolutely. Especially with technology yes. and so on. So, um, this disconnect has to... Um, get fixed, right, and get connected and bridged so that um, education is actually relevant, relevant right? Yes, and yes. That, you know, while, while students are under the care and purview mm, yes. of, of, of teachers and educators, that, um, you know, the, the, uh, that, they will, that they can actually help make the students future ready. Absolutely. Right? For, for the workforce that is now live around the world. Yeah. Okay, um, one of the things that I, I, I was watching on, on a, a talk you gave, and basically what you stated was uh, the things that are being taught in education today, why it's becoming so irrelevant is, for example, uh, 
things like automation and digitization yes. and, and things like that. How would you want, if, if it were up to you, yes. what would the current education system look like? Okay, <coughs> so the current education system would be um, a tremendous creative space. Mm -hmm. Schools should be creative spaces yes. uh, where creativity and curiosity is completely unlocked, yes. right? Um, you know, there's a, um, a man called Ken Robinson who mm -hmm. does a lot of work on creativity, mm -hmm. for example, in, based in England. And, uh, you know, he's well known for saying that if you want to quish creativity yes. in a young person, just send them to school. Right? <laughs> That's true. You know? That's very true. So, you know, the system um, really, really has to get transformed, transformed. right? Yes. Um, you know, big issue is that, you know, educators, the teachers and leadership team, they don't have exposure mm -hmm. to the world of the modern world of work. Yes, they go yes. directly from teach, from high school to teacher teaching. training colleges into the system. So I think it's going to take um, collaborative collaborative partnerships right. like what we're doing with Global Peace Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, the Innovation Center here, and many many other working with technology companies. You're getting new inputs. Yes, and um, you know to uh, you know, people need to be exposed and retraining has to occur. And of course, the Ministry of Education yes. have to, they're a critical partner in this. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones who can scale. Absolutely, the absolutely. All we can do is create models, right? That, but the um, implementation comes yeah, down to them. Exactly. Um, when you talk about like cognitive skills versus non cognitive skills, yes. um, I was looking at something and they say currently, if we look at the labor market, you yeah. have a uh, labor or what we call the blue collar jobs yes. ranging from 50 to 60 percent then we have like the information or should we call it the info processing which yes. comes down 30 to 40 and right now in the education system creativity as you've mentioned mm -hmm. is just about 10 percent right it's about 10 percent when that flips which it's it's actually i can't say when it flips it's right. flipping yes even as parents because we look at the ministries and we're looking at uh, teachers but as the parents, what can they do? How do we alert the parents? Because currently in the society I live in, if, a, if someone grows up and goes and tells their parent, I want to drop human resource management, I want to become an yeah. artist, yeah. they'll be frowned upon if not uh, yes. heavily uh, you yes. know, judged. Yes. But what advice do you have? Because I'm seeing that creativity, anything we watch now, like creativity, when you look in the area of automation and everything that's there, yeah. creativity is the only asset that we have now. Yes. How would you advise parents, particularly in Africa, by yeah. the way? Because overseas, you know, anyone can yes. do anything. But here, it's still our parents and the system they grew up on, get a job and you can work Correct. there for the next 100 years and not be moved. Yes. But how, what advice would you give well, to parents? you know, sometimes the answers are right under our nose, mm -hmm. right? So let's talk about the parents, yes. right? They're working in the modern workforce. They're not working in the 20th century yes. or 19th. They're in the 21st century workforce. Right. So they are, the parents are more exposed to what work looks like than the teachers are, and the <laughs> educators are, right? You know, that you, we're, in, we're in an environment that's innovative, that's mm. creative, that's actually moving forward yes. so all they have to do is look around them in their own jobs yeah. and that you know uh, that they can actually be giving inputs mm -hmm. to the to the ministry to the education hey Things you are know, not working uh, our out. kids are in a system that mm. is it's, not that relevant yeah. but we're, we're we're in the real job market mm. and we see where, where where things are at and where things are going yes. right so you know let's work together mm. parents are a very vital piece of the equation Absolutely. here Absolutely. as a partner yeah. right with with educators mm. to to give real world inputs mm. right yes. and to um, you know create to create the, the, the students who can be uh, smart and future ready okay. actually I want to mention something else here too Please. so we're talking about innovation yes. and creativity yes. but actually more is you know technology and innovation right. this is value neutral technology is value neutral yes. So, especially here, we're talking about Africa, we're mm. talking about Uganda, mm. right? Where corruption is such Prevalent. a major disruptor yeah. to, to, to progress, right? Yes. So, it is more essential than ever that um, the young people that, get, that were getting exposed to mm. creativity also are anchored in character yes. and integrity, honesty. Absolutely. Because these are the things that 
actually destroy careers and yeah. destroy businesses, yes, right? Yes. So any business or enterprise um, is viable as long as you can trust uh, the people Employee. in it, right? Yeah, <laughs> we, we talked about that a little bit because I think um, our generation, well, gener for generations, the main focus has been on get your A grade, yes. you know, make sure your, your report comes back with A plus yeah. and A minus. But like you said, uh, another area that you concentrate on is like character building. Correct. Where you talk about things like empathy, resilience, and, yes. you know, um, problem solving mindset. Yes. And, you know, so you're right to say you can have all your A's, but uh, if your workplace or the company you run is full of uh, people who have A plus but yes. don't have integrity. Yes. I think that also is not a great equation. And I, I think, it, does that mean that a human resource today or in the future is going to be concentrating more even on these non-cognitive skills a lot more than they're looking at your grade? Oh, it's already happening. Mm. <coughs> there, it, it, for example, when, when any young person who goes for an interview, whether yes. even in manufacturing, it doesn't matter yes. what industry it is, but what every employer is looking for most fundamentally mm. Mm. is they want a good, competent em employee. Absolutely. And I want to emphasize good. Good, right? yes. Because one toxic um, employee right, can bunch. actually wreak havoc yes. in a small company or business. Mm -hmm. You know, it, actually there's data on this in the U.S. Mm -hmm. It's called engagement, right? right? Yes. So only like in the U.S., 30% of workers are engaged. Wow. Um, you know, you have uh, about 60% that are not engaged, and you have about 18% that are disengaged, wow. right? So you need, here's the data, you need four engaged yes. employees just to counteract one what? disengaged employee. Wow. Can you imagine that? Right? So if you have like a, 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 a company with about 6,000 people, you have a lot of losses going you on. You have, yes. even with one, one uh, disengaged or toxic yes. employee. So companies today, they cannot, they can't afford, it's bad Absolutely, for business, yes. to bring people with bad character yeah. on board. So in our work, we want to make character as cool as technology, yes. right? It's, it's should, it should, should be cool part factor, of it, yes. Right? yes. It's actually essential, just right and wrong, right? Would you be able to expose more in the PISA framework? Is it called the PISA framework? Yes, PISA framework? yes, Could yes. Could you yes, tell us about yes. that? Yeah. So uh, the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development based in Paris, yes. uh, they... Um, uh, uh, you know, have something called PISA, the Program for International uh, Student Assessment. Mm -hmm. So this is how countries uh, globally mm -hmm. are evaluated on their uh, quality of their education system. Right. So since 1980, mm -hmm. currently uh, they've been doing this. They um, uh, survey 15-year-olds, okay. right, up until now on discipline knowledge, right. essentially science, math, and language arts, mm -hmm. right? And um, 80 countries are participating in this. I would really highly advise that Uganda participates in this, right? Okay. Uh, I don't know if you are right now. I don't think so. Mm. But um, here's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. Starting next year in 2018, PISA is actually starting a process of change in their evaluation. Mm -hmm. They're expanding for the very, very first time in decades, mm -hmm. way beyond discipline knowledge only. Yes. They're actually, a third of the evaluation is going to be on attitudes and values. Wow. A third is going to be on skills, social emotional skills, cognitive skills, yes. and even in the knowledge area, that's expanding beyond discipline knowledge to include interdisciplinary knowledge and practical knowledge, yes. right? Kind of what you're doing here in the Innovation Center, yes. actually. I think uh, practicality, practicality goes a long way. interdisciplinary, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the discipline-only approach um, is, 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 um, is important mm. to be competent, by the way, yes. in discipline knowledge, but you can't just stay there anymore. Yes. You've got to get do cross-pollination between the disciplines. Be versatile. Right? But attitudes situation. and values, they figured out how to survey that. And also in Global Peace Foundation, we're, we're in the final stages of validating a survey that will measure character, creativity, and relationships in schools. Wow. We're already already uh, doing the testing on this in Kenya, okay. and in the early part of the new year, that will be. Um, it's already a reliable survey, mm. and uh, we will establish uh, predictive validity and constructability on that in a few within a month or two. Okay, 
So um, another thing, when we look at Africa as a continent, uh, we have about 1.8 billion youth. Yes. Well, Uganda, we're proud to say we're the, se the second youngest nation in the world as, wow. of, as of now, well, yes. up to date. But um, as much as it is such an exciting time, mm -hmm. I find it to be a very, very critical time. Correct because our education system still continues to rule the traditional education yes. system. And how I know is because we need a really huge mindset change because yes. as Kafara Foundation, we go out and, and provide the, the, uh, the free digital skills yes. uh, that's uh, on part of, of Google and Centum Learning. But we're faced where we go and we offer and they say, that's not for us. Yes. It's, it's not necessary. Yes. What do you see? could be the potential outcome if we don't jump on this digital age? It's going to be um, seriously uh, backwards, right? Um, let's look at it from another point of view, mm. right? So you talked about a 1.8 billion uh, yes. population yes. and, you know, uh, uh, you know, Uganda is the second largest in the world. Mm. Actually, that's not a problem. That mm. is your number one asset, yes. actually. Yes. It is a huge asset. You know, the in country, in any country, the asset is not the natural resources. Yes, it's the, the people, productive, the productive and particularly people. Particularly young people yeah. whose minds are curious, yes. imaginative. This is like a characteristic of any any person, mm -hmm. right? Natural uh, uh, characteristic. So you know, I think it's incumbent upon us. Like when you have your number one asset and you don't invest exactly. in it, there's something seriously wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So we need as many stakeholders, mm -hmm. parents. Everyone we can muster up, right, and create partnerships to actually develop this asset, yes. which will actually, which is our young people, yeah, which will drive unbelievable innovation. You see this innovation center here? This should be everywhere. Right? And we are, we are doing this in the Peace Foundation, in public schools, through Leap Hubs, like um, entre entrepreneurship and science, you know, incubator. Mm -hmm. So our partnership that we formalized here today. Caffrey Foundation is significant in that regard, right? Okay. Yeah. So let's go for a short break and we'll be right back. Thank you for watching. Okay. Hey there, I am here to tell you about Ujama a community by Kafero Foundation to create positive impact, opportunities and economic prosperity for the youth across Africa. I am a part of the community and here is why you should join us. Number one, you have access to capital by being a part of a whole ecosystem of angel investors and small business owners. You also have access to free entrance into our live shows at our studios on kafero.tv where you'll get to meet all the CEOs and business people that will be able to host. They'll mentor you, they'll give you the knowledge that you need to start your own business. And finally, you have access to business skills. Get the right knowledge you require to sustain your business through our tailored curriculums on our online platform. I'm going to leave you with five words to think about. Education, capital, employment, impact, Ujama. Welcome back to Unpacked on Kafero.tv. Once again, I'm your host, Angela Mirembe. And once again, we have Dr. Tony Devine from the Global Peace Foundation. And we've been talking about education, the system, where it's going, where we need to change. So once again, we'll come back. For the break, we wanted to tackle some of the other things that um, the foundation does. Mm -hmm. And one of those that you mentioned was uh, the Leap Hubs mm -hmm. in Kenya. Yes. Could you shed more light? Because I think I'm very interested. When I hear the word <laughs> leap, it's like mm -hmm. a quantum leap into something. And then hubs, which you already mentioned, should yes. really be placed in just about every center. Yes. So would you mind telling us more about the uh, Leap Hubs that in, in Kenya? Yes, you conceptualized it so well there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was the concept behind it. Mm -hmm. So Leap Hubs are uh, entrepreneurship and science incubators mm -hmm. in public high schools okay. uh, in Kenya. Uh, we started this three years ago. Um, and when we 
we, we visited university incubators, right? And we went, when we went to the universities, we noticed something um, interesting. We, we saw, you know, these were investors um, invested into building these incubators, yes, yes. but they were empty. There was like nobody there, right? Wow. Almost no <laughs> one there, you know, and we just heard a story about an isolated story here and there, right? Yes. So we, we came up with this idea that, you know, the, um, that it's maybe too late. It's too late. Uh, when, it, when, when you get to the university, yes. like your, your dreams are getting kind of faded <laughs> away, right? Yes. And I, I remember when I was young, um, you know, my greatest dreams and ideas were when, when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. right? So we felt, hey, you know, these young people who are in high schools, they're dreaming they're about dreamers. the future, right? Yes. They're like wonder. they have possibilities in their mind. Yes. So this is like the perfect combination to have an incubator in a high school. Mm -hmm. It was unheard of, right? Yes. So <clears throat> we went to the very first school. It was like My Forces Academy um, in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we, there was a great principal there. His name is Mr. Stephen Jarogi. And he was very welcome. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, we, we just had the conver We was just having a conversation. We thought it would take a year to get done. Forty minutes later, he called in the German teacher and the French teacher, and he said, you guys <coughs> are going to share a classroom. The other classroom is going to become a leap hub. Mm -hmm. And in instantly, that got converted into an innovative, creative space like this. Wow. And then it actually you know, spread to 24 schools. And now the Ministry of Education in Kenya have actually identified 102 schools across mm -hmm. the country, mm -hmm. two in each county, 47 counties. Uh, called they, they want to establish STEM schools, a right. boy and a girl school, yes. and they want to have this portfolio of uh, leap hops in all of these schools, plus mm. character and creativity, plus smart w workforce development, plus a big emphasis on STEM and science. It's very interesting. Yeah. I, I think we all face the same challenge because yeah. we've also done the digital skills training in, in the high schools yes. and in the universities. And I think, like you said, I think by the time someone gets to university, their mind is focused in one direction and they assume that everything else is a distraction. Yes, yes. So I, I'm actually hoping that in the future it will go as low as primary school. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think yes, we talked about go. this uh, yes. before the program. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Yes. Because that's where the creativity right. really stems. Right. Uh, even high school later, either they're being influenced yes. by the adults that stop yes. dreaming you need to be a doctor. Yes. So hopefully we can even take those lower yeah. down. Well, you know, let me expand on that for a second mm -hmm. of why this is actually critically important, mm -hmm. right? It's not important, it's critically it's important. Critical. Yes. Because, um, you know, more and more um, traditional jobs um, are Anything getting automated, yes. right? Yes. And that automated, automation is going, to, is going to have a bigger impact on a, on a developing na nation or continent, yes. right? So um, there are like millions of of Ugandan problems to solve yes. and African problems to solve. So we need entrepreneurs mm -hmm. on a scale today, as we go into 2018, that the world has never seen before. Yes. We yes. need entrepreneurs, we need job creators, Absolutely. because the traditional jobs are, not, are, are dying, right? Yes. They're, of course, in the high uh, computer science, yes. coding, yes. software technology Most areas, but even there, even then, they, they, they only tap top talent, yes. right? But, the, the opportunity for entrepreneurs solving African problems is like unbelievable, unlimited. We need to unlock that talent. I do hope that uh, Global Peace Foundation really puts its eye on Uganda because we are really one of the most, okay, it's not one of the, we are the most entrepreneurial <laughs> yes. countries in the world. However, yes. how many of those uh, businesses celebrate their first birthday yes. is a, a, a very, how can I term it? It's very deflating. Yes. Um, so I hope we do have the entrepreneurs, no doubt about that. Yes. It's very rare to find someone focused on one job. They yes. have some, whether it's, it's making bris, uh, briquettes. So they do something. So yes. I hope that even as we plan yes. to work together, we can really change that. Yes. Yeah. And and we're, we're very committed to Uganda. Yes. Uh, we have an affiliate here. Um, a great little team here yes. since uh, for the past five years, right? Mm -hmm. You know, make doing very hard stakeholder development, you know, with the Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. with schools. So we've gained a lot of trust. Mm -hmm. And um, now currently we have like eight schools, you okay. know, uh, public schools again. Here's more public-private partnership mm -hmm. in schools. 
with our character and creativity initiative. But in the beginning of the new year, in the past year, we've discovered amazing students coming up with entrepreneurial ideas. Yes. So Absolutely. we're going to actually formalize Leap Hubs, okay. right, in these schools yes. starting in the new year. And uh, this partnership here today is, is, um, is significant because that can be a pipeline Absolutely. of the top ideas that can come here and yeah. revert back in mentoring and whatnot, right? Absolutely. So I, I'm, I'm really excited. excited about that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Uh, let's talk about the moral and innovative leadership. Yes. Leadership, rarely will you find the word moral and leadership, exactly. especially where we have corruption yes. rampant through our yes. continent and just about any other country. Yes. When you teach a moral, innovative leadership, that is very different to the traditional leadership. Absolutely because is. for someone, when you mention leadership, is basically everyone must bow down to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But yes. Uh, what kind of leadership, when you state moral and innovative leadership, what is that exactly? How is it different from what we term as the traditional leadership skills? Yes. yes. So our founder, the founder of Global Peace Foundation, mm. Hyunjin Preston Moon, mm. um, uh, came up with this idea. And actually, um, it was announced for the very first time mm. here in Africa, in Kenya, at our Global Peace Convention mm -hmm. in 2010, right? And um, it is very, very different from the normal leadership, which is often called transactional leadership. Yes, yes. Transactional leadership doesn't care about people that much. Mm. It just cares exactly. about using people uh -huh. to get profit or whatever it is, yes. right? But moral and innovative leadership cares a lot about people, mm. right? And, um, and results, right? Both. So yes. it brings the people development and the, and the results acquisition together. Mm. But it also has this um, important uh, ingredient of, um, you know, having a sense to do things for the betterment of the, of the larger purpose, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so living for the sake of mankind, yes. right? Yes. Um, we often say in technology, we want to save the world. We want to, you know, this will change the world, yes. right? But change the world is value neutral. Yes. We want to change the world with moral leadership combined with innovation in a positive a direction, right? Mm -hmm. um, especially with the rate of the, the rate that technology is yes. developing today. If this is in the wrong hands, we're in trouble, Absolutely. right? Yes. So we need yes. to be guided. So this is actually a very core ingredient mm -hmm. in our programs. Okay. Uh, you know, for, for many, many, many years. And it's actually, uh, you know, even in our Leap Hubs, you know, students might come up with ideas and they hit walls. Mm. It is the leadership, the moral and innovative leadership, you know, the resiliency mm. that actually jogs them through that barrier and keeps uh, the innovation going, right? I like that. I like that a lot. Because, um, mm. like you've mentioned, you just don't want your business to grow and have the people. No. Miserable and depressed, it doesn't make any sense. So well, I think that's... let me add something else here too. Like in our, in our, in our, in the new businesses that our, the students in Kenya are doing, and we'll and we'll be doing it here, of course. You know, one of the first things we have them do is identify a set of core values yes. for your business, Absolutely. right? We also have them, you know, the assuming this will be successful. Mm. What will be your, what will be your uh, CSR? Yes. Right? Yes. What percentage will go back, back to the community? To, so they yes. define that, yes. right? And then they come up with what kind of a culture are we going to have? How do we tr treat teammates? Yes, exactly. How do we treat customers, suppliers, yes. right? Like that. What are the values and the culture that will allow that to keep going? So any company, mm -hmm. any entity that's successful is rooted in core values. You take <laughs> Apple, it's actually their values yes. is what's infused into yes. the iPhone. It's not just silicon, it values. I like what you yeah. said there because I was giving a talk to young people last weekend and I said, you need to create a business where you give back to the community. 100%. And, and their faces were like, <laughs> yes, they want <laughs> the money, right? What are you right? talking about? Yeah, but <laughs> yes. yeah, that's the way to go. That's the way to do business Absolutely. today. Absolutely. And then uh, when you talk about a smart workforce readiness. Yes. We've heard smartphones. Is it in yeah. any way related to it? You know, smart workforce. We've heard of smart cities, yes. smart countries. Yes. So what is a smart workforce and what is to be smart workforce ready? Okay, so um, they're smart and good. So the character and creativity and the moral and innovative leadership takes care of the good piece, right? Mm -hmm. The smart workforce readiness is... Um, familiarity with digital skills, mm -hmm. 
with technology, how technology actually is essential mm. to solve some of the um, uh, you know real pain uh, pain points yes, yes. in our economy. Mm. They can be solved with technology. Mm. So stu the students are not getting exposed to digital learning and technology in our current um, education system. So I think new partnerships yes. um, need to be imagined, and uh, that's what we're doing mm. a lot of. And um, you know to, to bring that and expose that into the into the students, and um, it's actually critical. Yes. It's a critical issue um, that this gets taken care of, right, yes. as quickly as possible. Speaking right? of uh, getting digital digital information out there, what's your take? Obviously, you've been in the education sector for quite some time. Mm. What's your take on the digital divide in terms of gender? Yes, because we, I think that is yes. also something that needs to be it, tackled as soon as possible. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, for example, no, I, it has to be equitable, mm. no doubt about it, mm. right? You know, um, we're 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 in the twenty first century. Women do not have to carry bricks, and <laughs> you know, they yeah, use their minds and their yes. creativity, yes. right? It's a whole other ball game mm. of talent. Mm. Women has the f same talent as men do, men do. right? Um, and that's why, for example. When we worked with Intel as a partner in Kenya, yeah. they had um, a program called She Will Learn. They were working in girls' high schools. And then uh, we talked to them and we said, you know, how about we, you know, the digital skills you're, that you're exposing them to, right. why don't we have an application of that to get these girls also to be entrepreneurs? Absolutely. So we partnered on that, right? And that, that uh, She Will Learn model came into our leap hubs. Yes. And, that, and, and that competency led these girls. Mm -hmm to be doing amazing things. Like mm. one group of girls came up with a medical app wow. that um, allowed patients right, mm. uh, uh, to, to make appointments with their doctors. This was a major pain point wow. over there. Yeah. Another group of girls came up with a voting app mm. um, yeah. you know, to allow digital voting, yes. right? They talked to the election commission mm. and actually in the most recent elections in Kenya, uh, a lot of it was digitized, digital voting. They introduced for the first time. So our young Great. students are coming up with these ideas that you know we're seeing get, getting into the market. You yeah, know? that uh, yeah. actually reminds me. I think Mastercard also did a survey, and once again, uh, when they looked at the women throughout Africa, still the, yes. the women in Uganda still came to the top in terms of entrepreneurship. Absolutely. So that's what I that's what I, I have faith and hope in that. That yes. uh, as far as entrepreneurship is. Um, Concerned? Yes. We're up there, but it's yes. the other uh, things that are necessary. That's right. The digital skills, yes. the mentoring, the Correct. opportunities, the labs. Correct. So I'm hoping that uh, that is something through our yes. partnership. And that we exactly. Can and and also too, like you know, as these innovation centers, um, and they need to they need to get increased big time. Yes. That the focus uh, is on solving Ugandan problems. problems. Right, just all around yes. you, you know, whether it's in agriculture, which is half the economy or maybe more, yeah. it needs innovation, yes. right? It's like look around you, solve a local problem yes. using using skills, creativity, character, technology, um, and so on, right? It's like th those businesses will bloom. You yeah. have a, you have a ready made market yes. here yes. <laughs> for this. You don't need to go to the U.S. Yes. Or, it's like. It's a, such a great opportunity. There's great challenges, yes. but I actually see the opportunities. They're great. The unlimited, yeah. right? Unlimited opportunities. I hope the young people, as we work together, uh, we can stimulate them to also see, like, this is the best place to be. To be right they don't now. need to emigrate to U.S. To they the should stay here, <laughs> right? Just like the founder here, right? Well, we we uh, do. Cafero, Newton, yes. the others, the team here, yeah. you saw that yourself. Yes. So you invested into this yes. uh, innovation center. That's actually very admirable. And we need to see a lot of that going on. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And I think what you've touched is that the youth should realize they don't need to, to travel out there. No. But right now we have droves of them that are actually going yes. to the United uh, yes. Emirates, yes. Uh, Arab, Arab Emirates. Yes. So even just letting them know, because they'll say the opportunities, but one word that you said, innovation. Right. Does innovation have to have a tech aspect to it? Because it does not. Yeah, I think that is also no. something that people need to understand. Correct. Because when they say, oh, it's an incubation hub or innovation hub, immediately someone's like, I don't have any ICT skills, I don't no. have digital skills, so it's not no. for me. No. So In how would you simply define the word innovation? 
Well, innovation is like creatively solving a, a real world problem. And, you know, you can, that's like the driver, mm -hmm. right? And then your toolbox can be a variety of things. It can be low cost, comp like look at this innovation center here. Right. When I look at the, the walls, the floor, the seats, mm -hmm. it's low cost stuff, yes. right? Yes. Um, you know, so it does, not, it does not have to be all technology. Okay most important thing, technology is just a tool. Yes, absolutely. It's just one, right. of, your, it's just one of the tools in your toolbox. Absolutely. There's other creative ways that problems can be solved, yes. right, with technology and with other creative ways, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, this all sounds good. Um, maybe we can be open to some questions absolutely. from the audience? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, we have somebody back there. I'm called Rebecca. I'm having one question for you. Uh, ever since you started this project in Uganda, what have been the challenges that you have been going through uh, along the way as you are running this thing? And another thing, I believe you have been dealing with uh, young people. What are some things that you really see that people take for granted? Yes. As the young people. So um, challenges, I think um, the challenges are many. <laughs> um, you know, one challenge, of course, is, is getting, uh, you know, I, I think we've got amazing ideas. Uh, we, you know, we, we need investors uh, to see the potentiality and get on board, right? Um, another another challenge is, you know, the ed the education system is mm. kind of stuck, right? Yes. But we do have amazing principals and teachers in the schools we're working with on the positive side that also see these possibilities. Mm. So they're willing to do more, even within the current system, right? So the challenges are many, and we shouldn't be afraid of challenges mm. at all, yes. right? It's like there's silver linings behind every challenge. Mm. You know, it's lead, that's where leadership comes yeah. in. That's opportunity. Yes. A challenge means opportunity, opportunity yes. right? So that's the way we look at it, you know? And then um, about, about your young people, like I'm super impressed with the young people here in Uganda, right, mm. that I, I meet in your schools, you mm. know, and I see them all around. Mm. I, I mean, all I see is like tremendous hope Right. There's also some despair and you know frustration and so yeah. on. But I do. But I see so actually more, hope. like, these young kids are brimming with possibilities. Right. So like, it's like it, it's right infectious. Skills. Right. Mm. It's like just if we can just help them out a yes. little bit, mentor give them a prod, them, mentor them. them yes. Right. Mm. You, you very. It doesn't take long. Mm. These guys are ready to go. Yeah. One prod and they're off. Absolutely. We're seeing this all over the yeah. place. So, yeah. um, as I said in the beginning. This is your number one asset. Invest into them. Yeah. And we're happy to work with you to invest into them. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, um, by the names of called Kagoda Rogers. Uh, my question is, uh, what's your take on the rise of uh, social enterprises across Africa? And uh, the other question will be, uh, do you think aid is, uh, do you think Africa needs aid? or oh, aid is no longer applying to our continent, or it's no longer making a change? Yes, okay, very very good, big, big block questions here, right? <laughs> um, so, okay, first of all, um, on social enterprise, right? Um, social enterprise is very important, right? We need lots of social enterprises, right? Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, they're, they're not in the business of making a profit per se, but they're, Changing founders who, who actually want to bring yeah. things, change about in a positive way. We need tons of that here mm -hmm. on the continent, right, here in Uganda. We also need for-profit businesses yeah. as well, right? Mm -hmm. We also need, you know, uh, people doing amazing science projects as well. Mm -hmm. So we need all of that, in fact, right? In terms of aid, um, uh, of course, um, I think aid should be more of, a, of an investment. It, I, I'm just... I think a lot of people are questioning its effectiveness mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, I think I think the countries that are providing aid um, need to, um, I think, reimagine 
um, their outcomes and goals, right, of where this can have the biggest impact. I think a lot mm -hmm. of aid gets lost in the system. Yes. You know, it doesn't hit the front. The, 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 uh, the reason it was sent. It, the reason it was yeah. sent, right? It doesn't hit the field, so mm -hmm. to speak, right? So I think that a lot of that needs to be rethought. Um, and the goal is, of course, you know, how can it be as effective as possible? Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to Ireland after this. I'm going to be having me have a meeting with Irish aid mm. in Ireland. That um, you know, Uganda is one of the recipient countries of that. Okay. We'll be talking about that topic, right? right? right yeah, yeah, and bringing feedback mm. from here, right? So we can uh, think about I how to make too. it more effective, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So this is a young man here. I have a question. He's the youngest <laughs> in the room. We're talking yes. about young people here. <laughs> you uh, don't have seems a, he's a He ask. has a smartphone, mm -hmm. and so maybe you have a nice question for us. <laughs> so, uh, the, the people of Kafir Foundation would thank you for your support in in bringing up the organization mm -hmm. so far, and thank you for joining. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, our, it's our great pleasure. Yeah, and, but uh, uh, I think yeah. that's the generation for me that uh, yes. is because, you know, he's on holiday and yes. uh, rather than maybe watch some cartoons, he's actually here to learn some coding oh, that's so great. and graphics. So we, yeah. as, the, as we transition and have the incubation hub, we really want to also go into the, the younger Yeah, space. yeah, that's so, right. Because I think exactly. his mind, he's, he's still, he's like, I can do anything. I yes, can become yes. Superman. How, how old are you? Oh, there you go. Yes. See, you're, you're serious, correct? Yes, I'm yeah. very serious. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely serious, yes. Uh, I thought like we were kind. Of, I think we're behind just in the high school. Yeah, so we so, need, we need so to go one, one or two years into, younger. Yeah, yeah exactly. You might look exactly. Into the younger ones absolutely, as well. absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. So here it comes. Yeah. actually a real concern. I mean, we, we are here to create a new history yes. for the world, right? And, you know, who creates? It's people that create history. It's not everyone. You've got outliers, people that are going to go above and beyond, um, that, are, that are going to invest and that, um, you know, become, um, you know, uh, who can embody the principles we're talking about, the moral and innovative leadership, the entrepreneurial, who, uh, who are willing to sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I saw on your innovation wall that you have, it was Einstein and Steve, Steve Jobs and, and Nelson Mandela. Mandela. I mean, you just look at you just look at their lives, yes. right? They sacrificed so for the much. sake of others yes. so much, right? You know, yes, they they got they got some benefit, but that wasn't their driving motivation. Exactly. Their driving motivation was to humanity, bring positive yes. change in the world, to impact and make people's lives better. Exactly. We need we need young people today. In twenty in on December seventh, twenty seventeen, stepping up. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm going to do that, yes. right? And uh, you know, I'm very impressed with the founders here mm -hmm. that they're doing that. That's what they did, right? Yes. Um, you know, Cafero and and uh, Newton and yourself and others, right? You're you're making that sacrifice mm -hmm. uh, to start off this found this uh, innovation center. That's so admirable. Mm -hmm. We need models like you guys yes. to Thank do you. this. Yeah, yeah, many, many, many. Yes, I think um, one of the reasons that uh, the young people still have a problem, you know, when 
when you look at Steve Jobs, if you can relate and say, as a young man, he did this so I can yes. do it. Mandela, you know, we see the pictures of him yes. in his old age, but he was locked up as a pretty yes. young man. So I think also one of the other problems is if a young person cannot get a history book to read about yes. this person yes. and they're reading about someone in 1800s, yes. I think even to have a role model today could right. be a problem. Yes. It's a problem because if someone's reading, I mean... Yeah. President Obama was the first African American president. Yes. But if he's not written anywhere in history, yes. then no one will be able to say, I can make it or I can do it. So, exactly. Yeah. You know, on that point, you talk about reading, mm. right? So we talk about reading. Oh, yeah, that's nice to read, right? Yes. But you, you take an entrepreneur like Elon Musk, yes. right, who, who founded Tesla, Tesla and yeah. also SpaceX. Yes. Now, he didn't know a lot about rockets. To, uh, and when he says, well, how did you, you, you have no background. He, he founded PayPal, right? Yes, yes, financial, yes, yeah, the financial, financial thing. So yeah. he had no background in engineering and wow. rocketry or anything like this. So he said, I, I read a couple of books on it. <laughs> yeah, I went to Russia. I got a couple of books from there. I got a couple of books here and there. So I read about, I read about rockets in books. And that's how he started SpaceX. Now, if we could have that story told <laughs> in the history class, yes, I think there might be a, a drastic yeah. change. If we, if history class was like history A, you have <laughs> him, and then you have Steve Jobs, yeah. and I think the world might be able. That's all doable. You read a few books, yes. right, and then go and go and look at a you, few YouTube videos. Absolutely. You, uh, you know, you can be moving fast, right? I think yeah. we're going to take that on. We're going to start yeah. a YouTube class. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I have a little library yes, here, right? Yes, yeah. But I think um, that's the way to go. Absolutely. And I'm so glad that we share the same um, principles. It would have been a very hard interview if you had come to support the old <laughs> traditional system. I think I might have been out of words, but it's very good no, to, thank to you. be in partnership with someone absolutely. who's on the same page as you. Yeah, we absolutely. We're delighted. It was a great pleasure to be it here. Was. It was a wonderful, a wonderful interview. and. So happy to have been here with Thank you guys you. today. Thank you, Thank for, you for accepting our invitation. Yes. And we're so My honor. delighted My to honor. have you yeah. here. Thank you so much. Thank Dr. you. Tony. Thank you. So that was Unpacked here on Cafero.tv. Once again, my, my name is Angela Mirembe. I was your host, and see you back 